The Council for National Policy is a right-wing organization who in 2020 urged its members to contact state lawmakers in Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Georgia, all so they can influence these lawmakers to undemocratically overturn the election in favor of Donald Trump. Now, there's a lot of right-wing organizations that did just that, but the reason why this one is of particular interest is because one of its members, one of its prominent members, mind you, is this woman right here. Her name is Virginia Thomas, and she is the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Now, let me repeat that. This organization, which the spouse of a Supreme Court Justice is a part of, was trying to encourage people to pressure lawmakers to subvert the will of voters. A little bit close to Clarence Thomas, no? So, at a minimum, it's a conflict of interest, obviously, but a bombshell report from the New York Times suggests that this is a lot more. It goes deeper than just a conflict of interest. And as Danny Hakim and Joe Becker of the New York Times report, Virginia Thomas had taken on a prominent role at the council during the Trump years and by 2019 had joined the nine-member board of CNP Action, an arm of the council organized as a 501c4 under a provision of the tax code that allows for direct political advocacy. It was CNP Action that circulated the November Action Steps document, the existence of which has not been previously reported. It instructed members to pressure Republican lawmakers into challenging the election results and appointing alternate slates of electors, demand that they not abandon their constitutional responsibilities during a time such as this. Such a plan, if carried out successfully, would have almost certainly landed before the Supreme Court and Ginny Thomas's husband. In fact, Trump was already calling for that to happen. In a December 2nd speech at the White House, the president falsely claimed that millions of votes were cast illegally in swing states alone and said he hoped the Supreme Court of the United States will see it and will do what's right for our country because our country cannot live with this kind of an election. Ginny Thomas insists in her counsel biography that she and her husband operate in separate professional lanes, but those lanes in fact merge with notable frequency. For the three decades he has sat on the Supreme Court, they have worked in tandem from the bench and the political trenches to take aim at targets like Roe v. Wade and affirmative action. Now, if Justice Clarence Thomas had any integrity whatsoever, he would resign because of this conflict of interest. But the way that her political advocacy and her work with organizations overlaps with Clarence Thomas's work as a Supreme Court justice, I mean, he should just be impeached. This is unacceptable. Her organization was trying to get people to put pressure on lawmakers so they send fake electors to the Electoral College so they can subvert the will of voters. And when this ultimately comes before the Supreme Court in the event this were to be successful, her husband will then give the final death blow to democracy. This is insane. To say it's insane really is an understatement. We have a Supreme Court justice whose wife is part of this insurrectionist movement to kill democracy in the United States, and I don't think that it's unreasonable to suggest that he's also sympathetic to this movement that his wife is directly involved in. Now, that's not the only horrible thing that Virginia uh, has done, but it's probably the worst. But here's some more details here. In addition to her perch at the Council for National Policy, she founded a group called Groundswell with the support of Stephen K. Bannon, the hardline nationalist and former Trump advisor. It holds a weekly meeting of influential conservatives, many of whom work directly on issues that have come before the Supreme Court. So she works with organizations that try to get specific issues to the Supreme Court, where her husband will then rule in a very biased way. And one thing that the article points out is that this is really unprecedented. Usually Supreme Court justices, they don't even speak at many events because they want to make sure that it is viewed that they are as impartial as they can possibly be. So they don't want to in any way, shape or form signal to people that they are taking a political side, even though we know that that's what they do. But they're just shameless. And that's what the article really goes into. They are shameless. Uh, Clarence Thomas is a brazen ideologue, and he doesn't care 
how this looks. Now, the article itself is incredibly long and comprehensive, so we obviously can't get through all of it, but there's a couple of main takeaways that I think are really fascinating to me. So, first and foremost, uh, she used her husband's position as a Supreme Court justice to gain access to Trump's White House. Once she was there, she aggressively lobbied for certain policies and personnel to the point where aides in the Oval Office reportedly were aggravated at her. She and Clarence Thomas attended events hosted by conservative organizations, specifically organizations that try to get particular issues like Roe v. Wade before the Supreme Court, and they both leveraged their positions in government, he in the Supreme Court, her in the White House, to attract donations and memberships to said organizations. So the pattern here is that consistently they both overlap. She says that her and her husband have separate political lives. What's the specific uh, phrase that she used? Separate political or separate professional lanes, rather. But that isn't actually happening. And one paragraph that's damning really concisely summarizes what's going on here with them. New reporting also shows how blurred the lines between the couple's interests became during the effort to overturn the 2020 election, which culminated in the rally held at the Ellipse just outside the White House grounds, aimed at stopping Congress from certifying the state votes that gave Biden his victory. Many of the rally organizers and those advising Trump had connections to the Thomases, but little has been known about what role, if any, Ginny Thomas played beyond the fact that on the morning of the March to Save America, as the rally was called, she urged her Facebook followers to watch how the day unfolded. Love MAGA people she posted before the march turned violent. God bless each of you standing up or praying. God bless each of you standing up or praying. Standing up for what specifically? To overturn the election in favor of Donald Trump because she favors authoritarianism. She favors a pro-Trump dictatorship over the democratic will of the people. So to say that this is an issue is a gross understatement. I, I, I'm honestly shocked. This is a bombshell. And I get that there's a lot of things going on in the world currently, but this is a massive, massive scandal. A member of the Supreme Court has a wife who is affiliated with the insurrectionist movement in the United States to kill democracy. So to say that he poses a threat to democracy and the Constitution itself, I think that that's pretty reasonable no so there should absolutely be uh you know a thorough investigation into this and if he had integrity as i stated he would resign because of this conflict of interest and being a supreme court justice and wanting at least in theory to maintain the facade of impartiality you'd think that he you know would would shy away from this stuff but no him and his wife are overtly political and not just political in terms of them endorsing particular positions. They tried to kill democracy in the United States. At least she did. And we know he's sympathetic to what she's doing because they're fucking married. So are, are we naive? Are we going to pretend as if there's some division between them? She doesn't talk about what she's doing and he doesn't talk about what he is doing before bed. Are, are we that naive as a country? Get him out of there. Impeach him. He should not be a Supreme Court justice when... He's part of this effort, not only to undermine democracy, but to frivolously bring lawsuits before the Supreme Court so they can overturn decades of precedent at the behest of Republican extremists in this country. It's truly just ridiculous that this is the state of American politics where we have Supreme Court justices so brazenly and overtly political and not just political, but extremist in their right wing ideology. And they're basically flaunting it, using their positions of power to, you know, build up membership, shore up support with these organizations that his wife works with. It's truly not acceptable at a minimum, but I mean, there should be consequences for him. This should not stand. And, you know, the same would be true if this were one of the liberal justices. Just imagine if, uh, let's say, Justice Sotomayor was speaking at Black Lives Matter hosted events and talking about Medicare for All and going out of her way to be affiliated with organizations like Justice Democrats, for example, or any political organization, do you know how the right would respond? They would be screeching at the top of their lungs about this, how this is an activist justice and she shouldn't be on the Supreme Court. 
And they'd be right about that. But when Justice Thomas is doing it, well, because he's pursuing their extremist agenda, they're okay with it. No, this is the definition of an activist judge. His wife is an insurrectionist, and he probably is an insurrectionist too. He's at least at a minimum like sympathetic towards the insurrectionist movement. So what is he doing? Impeach him, get him off the Supreme Court, or pack the fucking Supreme Court so his influence diminishes. This is not okay. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.